Hello and welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. In this lecture we're going to cover the use of peripheral devices. We're going to look at how to work with plug-and-play devices and understand the purpose of a device driver. We're going to look at how to connect a display and audio devices such as speakers, microphones, and we'll, we'll include webcams in that category as well. And then we're going to look at the different types of printers and their interfaces and how to install and configure printers and scanners. Most devices used in Windows platforms are defined as plug and play, which means we plug them into the computer and Windows will locate the driver, install the device driver, and automatically make the connection. Many of these are also hot swappable, meaning we can plug the device in and disconnect it without having to restart the system. A flash drive is a great example of that. Uh, on occasion, we have to manually install a driver. Uh, occasionally, the plug-and-play features don't work the way we expect them to, or the vendor may have a set of drivers we need or software that we need to download. Or even if we went old school, we might buy something that has a CD with driver information for installation on it. So on occasion, we still need to manually install devices. With more complicated devices, uh, we sometimes have to do further steps after we install them. Uh, printers are a great example of that. Not only do we need to plug them in, but frequently we need to set them up to work with our network or our other devices, or even we would like to perhaps share them with other computers on the network. So they require not only installation, but further steps to configure them after the device is installed on the system. If we want to remove or uninstall a device or its device drivers, we can do that quickly from the device manager. Now you can uh, get to the device manager a couple of different ways. If you click on the instant search and type in device manager, it'll bring it up. If you right click on the start button, you should see an option on there that says device manager. Or if you want to use a quick keyboard shortcut, it would be the start, the Windows Start button, and the X. But on uh, in the Device Manager, you can see it's a complete list of all the different devices connected to your computer. If you right-click on these, you'll see a number of options, including uninstall. Uh, so you can easily remove the device from this list. Uh, also, if you plug something in and the computer does not detect it initially, if you go up here at the top where the computer is, so in this top, uh, in this example it says desktop, if you right click on that, you can tell it to rescan for any changes and something that was plugged in may be picked up on in the device manager at that point. There's another set of devices that we use with the computer that we're going to define as IP-based peripherals. So in that case, that means we access the device through a IP address. Uh, one common example of that is going to be a web-based camera. Uh, perhaps you have it on the front of your house or the business has a security camera. You would access the configuration by typing, going to the web browser and typing in the uh, private IP address. In this case, in this example, uh, the person went to 192.168.1.252, which happens to be uh, their TP-Link router, and now they're going to go ahead and configure it. So the computer can reach it, but this device is not installed, but the computer is still using it through the IP uh, and the LAN. We have a variety of different types of display devices. Uh, most common now for computers is what we call flat screen display as opposed to the old CRTs. They can come in several different uh, formats, uh, liquid crystal display with TFTs. Uh, we also have LEDs for backlight and OLEDs. And many of these uh, are described by the uh, amount of colors they display and uh, by the resolution. We also have a category of touch screens which are not uh, so popular for desktop PCs, but are definitely more popular in laptop and tablet applications. Touch screens work by uh, a, different, uh, a couple of different ways, but commonly there's the capacitive touch where the screen can uh, detect the capacitance of a finger or 
whatever uh, body part you're using, and it'll know where you're touching on the screen by that. Digital projectors uh, you'll find in conference rooms at schools and other places. Uh, they work very... Uh, to the computer, they're almost the exact same thing, um, except they dis are designed to display a very large image on an external screen or surface. Uh, some have uh, graphical interfaces that you can log into, so they might be controlled through an IP address. Uh, generally, you find these at businesses and organizations, not too often at somebody's home. In Windows 10, we have, uh, if we go through the settings, we can find the display settings for the um, for your displays. In here, there are uh, a number of different things that we can control, including uh, the background, very popular for people to choose that. We can um, choose themes, uh, different types of fonts, uh, how the taskbar and start bar, uh, start button look as well. So it gives us a lot of personalization from here. If we go into the screen resolution uh, of the uh, displays, we'll discover we can change the, the brightness of the display, the scale and layout, and resolution. Now, for resolution, it's recommended that we stay with the native resolution. We tell the computer to use the native resolution of the display. Uh, that'll give us the sharpest image. Now, if that ends up being too small, there are some other things we can do to make the image larger, which is uh, right here, change this, the, uh, the uh, scale of it. So right now it'd be at 100%. If you hit that drop down menu, you can make it bigger or smaller. So when we want to uh, install and configure dual monitors, we'll get a screen. If we go into the settings, you'll see the screen here. Uh, on the top one, it's showing that they're mirrored, meaning uh, image one or Screen one and screen two are showing the exact same thing. That's frequently used with a projector. So we want the projector to show exactly what is on the monitor of the computer that's controlling it. For many uh, people right now, they're using two monitors to give them more desktop space. So I can have Word open on one side and Excel open on the other. So we can, when we set that setting, we can determine which Monitor is number one, which is number two, which is on the left, which is on the right. And in here, in the settings, we also have the ability to configure the touch screen, uh, calibrate the display, tell it how to work with the pen and touch, and what gesture settings we would like to use. Most computers today have onboard audio, although it is possible to buy a audio sound card. Uh, an audio sound card will give us more features than the built-in audio. Um, on the back side of a computer, whether it has onboard audio or a card, you'll see there's uh, three, generally at least three jacks, the blue, the pink or red, and the lime or green. Blue is going to be line in, red or pink is the microphone, and the green is audio out. Now the other three colors they show here, black, or the other two colors, black and orange, could be a rear speaker or subwoofer, or they could be something else. There is no industry standard on what each color is going to do. We may also find that there is a, a USB port or something called a MIDI, M-I-D-I, which we don't see in this picture, but that's used for connecting musical devices. So we have a couple different ways we could do that, and a MIDI connection is what is used. Uh, depending on the sound, configuration you have. If you have multiple speakers, you can have stereo or you can have surround sound, subwoofer, all that uh, available to connect to your computer. We have an audio settings in Windows 10. We can get to it through the uh, task manager. We can right click on the on the sound icon. So if you right click, you don't get the uh, you get the menu that then allows you to get into sound applet applet. Sound applet will let us de define what is our default microphone and speaker setup, as well as turning off some uh, settings, which is pretty useful on some laptops where they have built-in microphones around the outside. Sometimes we don't want to use those because they pick up like all the sound in the room, and maybe we'd just like to use our USB headset. So we could go in here and we could turn off the internal microphones so they're never used. Webcams are pretty popular. Almost every notebook that you buy right now is going to have a built-in webcam. 
Uh, we also, for desktops, uh, frequently have external webcams. They have an example here, although that one's quite large. Uh, the popular Logitech one they have right now simply uh, snaps or lays right on the top of the monitor. Very nice. They give us very good uh, video uh, at this time. There is some concern about webcams being accessed uh, by nefarious characters. So some laptops now will have a little slider that you can physically cover up the webcam. So even if it were turned on, it would not show anything. And it might be a good policy if you're not using your external webcam to simply unplug it from the computer. That way you know nobody is taking or using it without your permission. Businesses in a small uh, and home offices uh, are using two basic types of printers at this point, a laser printer and an inkjet printer. They are different in how they apply an image to the paper. Uh, a laser jet uh, basically puts something called toner on the sheet of paper, which then uses heat and pressure to fuse it to the paper. Whereas inkjet is using some method to spray ink onto the piece of paper. So you've probably experienced it, but an inkjet uh, piece of paper coming out of the inkjet may still be wet slightly. So if you touch it, you could get ink on your, on your finger and they smear quite easily. Printers can type in black and white or color printing is pretty common, in which case they may have three to six or seven different uh, color printing cartridges uh, in order to uh, produce the colors needed. Printers can be connected locally to a computer through a USB or a Bluetooth and on a network they can, can be connected through an IP address. Now, most printers today are plug and play although they almost all come with uh, additional software. Some of the software is simply there to help you order uh, refills and that kind of stuff for your printer and all of this can be managed through your uh, devices and printers settings in Windows. At the bottom here you'll see there's a, a, a picture of what's called the printing queue. So once your printer starts printing you can right click in the notification area on the printer and you can see everything that is queued to print and you can control it from here if you need to. Once a printer is installed in Windows, you have a property and a preference box, which gives you access to additional features and controls for each printer. Uh, it can be things uh, like here on the properties box, we have the ability to print a test page. We can give it a name, we can share it, we can uh, control how color is managed. Uh, some of those settings have to do with how much ink is used each time and other customizable device settings depending on the printer. In the preferences over here we have things we can control such as the paper. If we have a color we can tell it to print in color or print in black and white if we wanted to and we can also control uh, other aspects of the printer, such as if it has the ability to print on two sides, we can control the duplexer from here as well. There are uh, two types of scanners that we'll find uh, out there. One is going to be a flatbed and the other is going to be a sheet fed. Uh, in the flatbed scanner, you lay the piece of paper on the bed and it scans. On the sheet fed, just like it sounds, you can put like 10 pieces of paper in and it'll feed them through one at a time. You can find uh, scanners that do both. So they might have a sheet feeder on the top and the ability to scan on a flatbed on the bottom. Scanners have many settings associated with them as well. And they're going to change based on the scanner. Here we have a, a, an HP DeskJet uh, scanner. And you can see on the left side, it has some predefined uh, types of scans document to file is selected, which means it's going to scan it, make it a PDF. It's going to be uh, apparently in grayscale. Our scanners generally connect through USB, although they could be IP based as well. Twain, the Twain interface is the old interface for scanners and WIA or 
Windows image acquisition is the new style. Scanners can output to a very variety of different file types, uh, including images, so JPEG, TIFF, PNG, or very popular is PDF images. Uh, when many uh, types of the software associated with uh, scanners are also able to recognize characters so we can make a scan document into something we could edit in say Microsoft Word. Digital cameras are very popular although most people are using their phones for this but um, professional photographers are still buying expensive uh, cameras. These generally uh, plug into the computer via, via USB to transfer the images. Uh, although some of them will use Wi-Fi, some of them just simply have a uh, built-in memory card that you pop out and connect to the computer and import them for uh, editing and sharing. So in this lesson, we looked at uh, using uh, how to install plug and play devices, using device drivers, uh, different display technologies, and how to connect multiple displays to a computer, uh, how to connect multimedia devices, sound, uh, speakers, webcams. And then we finished up by looking at printers and scanners and how they connect to the computer.